Hello team, greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB. This is Nish Kumar Singh and you are watching ISTQB Foundation series. We are in chapter 2 and today we are understanding the last topic of the chapter 2 that is maintenance testing in a bit more detailed way. So maintenance testing is generally about uh, finding as many defects as possible when there are different uh, updates or upgrades takes place. So generally maintenance team is responsible for taking care of the product once the product is released into the market. And once it is released, of course, there are several things which we could not accomplish as a part of release and we take care of such things after the release. So generally we call them as like updates, upgrades, migration and retirement are the major activities what maintenance team or maintenance testing deals with. So once the product is released, there's a longer gap between the next official release. So meanwhile, we keep fixing those things which we could not fix or adding extra value to the existing version so that people and the end user can really have a good experience while working with the application and should not face any challenges. So when you talk about updates, upgrades and migration generally and including retirement, there are a lot of things which would be taken into consideration in terms of maybe fixing a defect, maybe adding a newly built uh, feature into the existing application because for that you don't really have to release a new version of the product. So maybe you can include some minor features uh, in, as a part of uh, update to the existing live application. But as you do certain changes, we know from the previous tutorial that as we impact the uh, existing live application with some kind of addition, it may have adverse effect on the other part of it. So it invites a lot of regression for maintenance testing team, which generally deals with repeating those set of instructions which were working fine earlier. And of course, to make sure that you read on the source, those uh, test cases as part of regression suite. So let's understand in more detail, like what are the general triggers for the maintenance testing? And when you talk about, you know, classifying the different, uh, uh, you know, the maintenance trigger events like for example the first one is modifications which you add for example the planned enhancements you knew that we were going to do it's a feature requirement which you could not do during the first release and you wanted to take some time to add value to it and then later you release it as a part of update or you talk about any such things which is an upgrade like moving from if you take the example of windows release is say for example 7 windows 7 is the release and sp1 sp2 sp3 are the different updates which are being pushed to it and when move from one version to another version you call it as upgrade like moving from xp to uh, particular 7 internally even when you talk about upgrade, uh, it deals with uh, within the application if you have a particular new version being added, for example, 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, that these are the different versions of uh, the same uh, release. So generally, you can also include that as a part of it. And whenever you do such things, it invites regressions. Also, like certain things could be like you release the product and you call it as COTS like commercial off the self, which is another thing which you include as a part of third party software and you want to include or integrate with your existing application, you can put it as a part of that as well and it invites certain regressions to be executed. Migration is another thing which we we're just talking about when the environment moves from one platform to another. So say for example, the product is now being used on Windows and now they are planning or the client is planning to move from Windows to Linux or maybe Mac. So when you do that, you still run the regression suite entirely to make sure that the things are still working fine as it was working earlier in the previous environment. Retirement, of course, uh, reaches the end of its life, saying that we could not do, we cannot do any further modification to this, and we are officially retiring, just like Windows 10, where Windows 10 has officially retired, stating that we cannot add anything more on this, and we are looking forward for altogether a new product. So anyways, for more detail on that, you can look for something called as Winix. Winix is the new product from Windows, which is talking about uh, the new operating system, which is going to have the user-friendly of Windows and uh, the security features of Linux. Anyways, to know more about that, you can Google. Uh, we are here on the another topic called as impact analysis, which generally a maintenance team makes use of to identify the need of regression to be done. So generally, when you talk about maintenance testing, as they deal with a lot of regressions, what if the updates take place quite frequently, like weekly, twice, 
or weekly ones, then uh, you may have 5,000 test cases as a part of the regression. But executing all these test cases are quite difficult. So what you generally do is you understand uh, the entire architecture, you do a study on the control flow, and then you realize that, okay, these are the only things which need to be executed, not the entire suite. So impact analysis is a study on the control flow diagram, which would tell you that if I hit a particular module, or if I make changes to a particular functionality, what other functionalities will be impacted by this change? And you only accumulate those test cases which are associated with these impacted modules and run those test cases as part of a regression suite. So not everything always gets executed. We only execute that what impact analysis covers. So impact analysis is a study to find out the areas to be run or tested as a part of regression suite. Moreover, it could be difficult uh, in some cases to do impact analysis if the specifications are out of that. Like, for example, uh, at a certain point, if the requirement has completely changed, so, of course, the regression suite has to be updated. Then, of course, this will be a little complicated to be dealt with. Test cases are not documented or out of that, like you have not revised it from a long time, and you are still running the test cases, which is no longer helping you to find defects. Bidirectional traceability between the uh, test and the test basis may be not maintained well, so you cannot see what coverage we have achieved. Tool support is weak because regression invites good automation, so must be having a tool support. The people involved do not have domain or system knowledge because to find a quick defect from the application, you must have the knowledge about the domain or understanding on the application architecture. Insufficient has attention has been paid to the software maintainability during development. Now, maintainability means that the code structure and the script. So if in case you have not maintained it well during the release, then of course you have missed something really important which could have helped you during the maintenance testing. So these are certain uh, things which could make your job complicated when it comes to maintenance testing as lots of assets are required to be maintained and taken care of it. Anyways, that's all from here team in the maintenance testing being the last topic of this chapter. We just wanted to introduce you to maintenance testing and the roles and responsibility of that. Hope you enjoyed the video. In case you have any query, always feel free to comment below. I would be there to assist you with more details on the same. Look forward for the sample questions on this chapter in the upcoming tutorial, which would add value in terms of understanding what the quick questions can be from this chapter. So stay tuned for the upcoming tutorial. Please subscribe to the channel if you have not done so. It will help you to get notified with the latest video. And till then, keep learning, keep exploring. Thanks for watching the video team. Happy learning.